<laughs> yeah, uh, so I used to play computer games, and uh, it's very often, depending on your choice, the result of a game is different. But today, I'm going to give you a has three beginnings, not the ends. And the uh, first beginning is a choice. Before the university, I chose to study zoology. But basically, science about small creatures, right? And by the way, can you see this is a ladybug over there? Do you see that, right? Do you see that ladybug has some strange spots? Okay, so we're on the same page. So my father, who was uh, astrophysics, and he is, he said he was very upset. What he said, you should do something serious that study about little creatures is not. <laughs> my mother said, you should do something medical, helping people. What are you going to do to these creatures? And I said, all right, and I, I will try my best. This is the first beginning, right? The second beginning is geography. Originally, uh, I am from center of Russia. Right. And uh, already for 10 years, I lived in Japan, where I got my degree in zoology, right? And uh, nowadays, I live in science city called Tsukuba. There's a some coincidence, not very far from Fukushima prefecture, where they have a lot of troubles, but like just see. So, like there was that, uh, we made a group of volunteers visiting the place and helping two locals to clear up all these debris and these tsunami remains. Well, in just one of the pictures I took like last week, a man standing in front of the remains of his house. When I asked him, what are you going to do from now? And he got no proper answer. And the second person here is a kind of monk. And the monk said, I wish people in this area could fall asleep for like a, a year, when all these troubles is over, and then come back to the normal life. The third beginning of my story, as a as typical scientist, I like toys. And this one I just bought last week on eBay, and it calls Martian Life. So the designers thought this is a remaining of meteorite from Mars contains something creature like you know some some organic like something, and uh, they thought that it might look like this. Why not? <laughs> and I got original here. You can see. <laughs> and I like it very much. But I have personal connection to that because the organism I study looks like that. By the way, how many of you? Saw it and thought, oh my gosh, what the ugly creature. <laughs> okay, there's an idea in the beginning, so don't worry. And this is kind of a very special one. So what's so special? It lives in Africa. And uh, technically, the habitat is a kind of temporal pool remaining up to the rains. And actually, it's not uh, like warm by itself. Uh, it's supposed to be the fly, after all, so it's kind of larvae. The problem starts when uh, the rainy season is over. And, but everything in this pool, since water dry out, becomes in kind of part of debris. And it can be like this, completely dry for the half a year or even more. Then, the next rain comes, the natural magic starts to take place. They take a close look, it takes less than 30 minutes for this creature to revive back to life and then continue living in its lovely pool. Well, it's a pretty nice phenomenon to study. And uh, the first interesting thing, what we know, that the brains are not involved. So if you cut a head and drive a larvae, and then keep it for a few months, and you place it back to water, it will re revive back to life with the dissolved head. So it's very much basic mechanism we get here. So the stuff. But so let's think about, about water loss thing. How much water we human can lose? Let's say 15% and we are done. This creature can lose like 99% of water and still be fine. So the question for you as a designer or philosophers, do you think that something that lose 
99% of water is still alive. There is no metabolism, there is nothing running inside, so what is the definition of life here? Well, a few tricks from this creature I'm going to tell you that. The first is a strategy. This small organism does not care much about losing water. Instead, it lets all water out of the body, and then it simply replaces it by self-made sugar. So instead of water, it gets a sugar inside that pretty nicely separates all cells and organs inside of the body. So, technically, you know all what amber is, right? It can keep dead insects inside for a million of years. This creature builds amber inside of its body. It, is, it, it can keep it alive for at least decades, and I suspect even 100 years will do. Well, uh, a second interesting trick from this creature that it can stand amazingly high dose of radiation, as my, my background is radiation biology. So the resistance of every single creature has can save 500 people. If it would be split, the resistance can be split among the people. So it's pretty much. So you all know this movie, Biohazard, Resident Evil, Mutants Attacking, so you all know that the worst part in this radiation thing is mutation. Once you get mutation, so within like half an hour you'll be running monster and running, you know, trying to catch normal people, right? But actually it's not true, but yes, mutation is a big concern. So the question was, how this creature can protect its own DNA from damage? And this is one of the most scientific slides in this presentation, so I want you to take attention on this. So actually, the larvae cannot protect own DNA from the damage. So we scientists can visualize the DNA, actually, and this ball is kind of impact DNA. Once you irradiate anything, including us, with a high dose of radiation, your DNA will have such kind of tail which illustrates a damage. So DNA cut in pieces and in pieces you can see. So what we knew, that this larvae, naturally dried, already has a huge amount of DNA damage. But it takes kind of Japanese strategy of shikatagane. <laughs> okay, just let it be. Take all this damage and live. So the cells of these organisms is kind of thoughtful or patient. They postpone the decision to die because of DNA damage, because our human cells will die immediately or not. And that's the wait for a while unless their DNA cut back from pieces to one single molecule and then it lives. And these days, we are trying to teach human cells how to act in the same way. Well, but you know, in this dry form, this like a piece of debris something creature has extreme resistance to external factors. You can boil it, you can drop it in liquid nitrogen, you can place, place it under vacuum for like years, and it will still revive back to life. So, we were approached by several space agencies, including NASA and Russian space agency, and they said, you know, these days we have uh, some issues to be cleared before we can go to Mars and other planets, and this is really serious, it's not scientific movie. The big concern these days is the uh, biosafety of the space flights. Of course we all know that sometimes in the movies aliens come to our planet and now they're trying to grab everything, and so this is a big problem. But uh, this is a contrary problem here. If we reach Mars or any other planet, we can contaminate it by the terrestrial organism. So another big question is, life from the Earth can be placed in space and still be alive there? And uh, until recently, the answer was no. We all believe that nothing can survive in our space, so it was like kind of clear. So this is the main concern. <laughs> Well, so this is just one of the programs we're handling. It's called Barry's program. What we propose and what we coordinate with space agencies, we just get the most, the toughest creatures on this planet and place them in a special chamber and, of course, our creature in the first line. And then just we place it outside of a space station and see if we can manage it for a couple of years. 
like exactly the duration to fly to Mars and back. And just to see uh, how this astrobiological experiment is going, I just show you the video from the spacewalk. This is Mission Control Houston. We are now at the 5 hours and 19 minutes into today's spacewalk. You see the crew there getting to unhook the you know, flowers container. As we mentioned before, this is a biological experiment that uh, has been exposed to space on the outside of the Pierce docking compartment for several months. And there was originally three of these, and this is the third and final one that needs to be taken off and uh, put back inside the station. It will come home to support a future soybeans flight. And once it gets back on the ground, the scientists and researchers will take a look at all the different specimens and experiments that were, that were uh, inside to uh, see how they uh, have reacted to being exposed to space. But the team here in Houston confirmed uh, that Bowers has been detached now. This was the last major task of today's spacewalk, so we should see both Krypton and Sorrel. All right, so this is how routine life of astrobiologists go on. So the containers will be... I return back to Earth. And this is the like, first uh, lovely astronaut. And you see that two and a half years in outer space caused no problem to this creature. So it can come with, you know, back to life. So this is a, was a very big news because uh, special agencies these days should to reconsider the limitations and rules for biosafety. Well, the program <coughs> we are starting to launch this year caused Phobos Grand Program. Maybe you heard from the news that uh, we human can step on Mars probably not earlier than 2040 or something like this, considering all technological problems. Instead, the idea of this mission to send a uh, kind of space rocket to the Mars and its satellite's moon, and one of the satellites named Phobos, and uh, try to grab a piece of soil there and then bring it back to Earth to analyze. So it will be like first two ways mission. That is, it actually will bring something back. So based on the result of our experiments, the idea now to send not only a rocket itself, but also some tough creatures to see if they can handle this uh, first the space flight bearing back. So they actually they will be first living organisms from Earth to go to Mars and come back. So 2014, I hope to give you first result. Well, taking into account all what I said, you can see that making such kind of design for Martian-like creature was not that many, was that, not that crazy. Well, my message today, do not give up your dreams. If you're really interested in something, just keep doing that. Because you never know if it will have impact to humanity, health, or space science. And of course, take a closer look to the puddles and water pools, because you can find some other creature that probably has a great impact to our human life. And uh, thank you very much for your attention.